Hi everyone, welcome back for my Supergirl episode 12 breakdown. This episode takes a step back from the overall fight with Nixley a little and tells the story of Kelly really finding her own purpose on the team as Guardian with the help of John Diggle. You have probably noticed that he's been making the rounds on most of the CW superhero shows, with this one being the last until most likely he'll pop up in Armageddon, which is the five episode event that will be pulling in characters from past and present shows over on The Flash. Getting into it, after the last episode, Nixley is looking for those totems she needs to create the Allstone, while Supergirl and the team are looking for a way to track and stop her and siphon her fifth dimensional energy. However, something is stopping Nixley from being able to track the stones, so we take a look back and see what it is that caused this. So back to the building collapse and Kelly helping Josh, the little boy that she's taken an interest in helping. He was in the collapse and she helps get him to the local hospital. Immediately, we see that this hospital is not properly funded or staffed. Even the councilwoman Rankin is out of there in moments. As for the survivors here, we see that they all have this cough and seem to have some type of fifth dimensional magic issue going on. Kelly reaches out to several people, Alex, Supergirl, Andrea, and then even James, but no one really responds to her or seems interested in helping. Alex does get some respirators sent there, but it was minimal effort. It isn't that they necessarily don't care. They're just hyper-focused on catching Nixley or whatever else they have going on that they can't really see anything else. Meanwhile, Councilwoman Reichman gets an experimental gene therapy at a Luther-funded hospital, which has an adverse effect on everyone else as she heals immediately. Kelly sees that everyone seems to be getting worse with no explanation and no one is noticing. Eventually, John makes it to National City after being asked by James to check in on her, and he really begins to guide Kelly through everything, which starts by going to the source of these injuries, the building collapse. While they are there, they see the blue glow and begin to investigate. Supergirl and the team also make it here after tracking fifth dimensional energy, and together they think that this is debris from the collapse and not only will it help with tracking Nixie but Brainy also thinks it is what is making everyone sick. Kelly feels that this team still isn't seeing beyond catching the bad guy it becomes and begins to become very frustrated and a lack of response while Brainy begins collecting the debris to get the device to track Nixley and siphon her energy running. Kelly makes a trip to the hospital to check on Josh, and while there, she has one of those scanners to track the fifth dimensional energy that she got from Brainy, and she learns that Rankin has a high level of the fifth dimensional magic, but is also all healed and fine. Orlando overhears their conversation, her conversation with Diggle, and decides that he's going to call Rankin out for getting this special, special treatment while the people of her area are suffering. Of course, he's immediately attacked and there's an attempt to silence him, so Kelly and John step in to help. Kelly and Rankin fight, but with Rankin having this fifth dimensional power, Kelly really isn't a match. After the fight, Kelly heads to Supergirl's cave, which is what I'm calling it. Kelly just has has had it with the team and explodes. This is a wake-up call for all of them that they aren't really listening or valuing Kelly as a team member. John is the first to talk to her after, which I think was the best choice. Not only did he experience this sort of thing with Oliver, but he too also understands the racial inequity that is the real source of Kelly's frustration here. Eventually, Kara makes her appearance to talk to her and apologize for not only listening, but not being better about understanding and pay attention paying attention to these issues. Basically, they came to the understanding that while everyone has blind spots, it's important to listen to the other team members when they say that something is wrong. Brainy at this point understands that Rankin has had this gene therapy and that it is drawing energy from those that have the debris from the collapse in their system. He thinks that they can use the siphon they are making for Nixley to drain Rankin and help the people of the Heights. This means, though, that that device can't be used on Nixley, but that's something that they will deal with later. The people are suffering now, and so that is more important. After that's agreed upon, Kelly talks with Brady, and they come up with this new Guardian design just for her as they head into the showdown with Rankin. This time, with the help of the team, they pretty, 
pretty easily drain the fifth dimensional energy and divert it back to the people, restoring their energy, but also inadvertently helping Nixley. While this was kind of a side episode, it was good to see Kelly take her place on the team and really define what her individual mission as a hero is. She's going to be more of a people hero where Kara more focuses on the super villains and overall picture. So they each have a purpose and a goal and they all work together to make sure that everybody's achieving those goals. I think this also inspired Diggle to finally put that ring on. So I'm hoping that, that we get a glimpse of that in Armageddon. I know that we're probably not going to get a Green Lantern show here on CW because there's one in development at HBO Max, which is not this John Diggle. But I would like to see it on CW, at least in as guest appearances on shows. There were a few brief scenes with Lena this episode. She practices using her spells after finding out she was a witch last episode with Florence, her mother's friend. But when finding out about Nixley, she returns to National City. Upon her return, though, she finds her mother's spell book that was sent to her by Florence so she can continue to develop her power. So I'm anxious to see that as well. I think both Kelly and Lena are like the last two regular people on the team that don't have powers or don't have that weren't heroes and so to see them coming in to their own and and being these vital parts of the team even though they were before in their own way but they're really going to be able to do the more physical fighting now and so I think that's going to be interesting to see so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up if you want to see more videos like this then don't forget to subscribe to my channel too